learning check here, and I've got a picture to help you out if you need help. So which division of the autonomic nervous system innervates blood vessels? You may know this from your reading, or maybe I said it once. You also can see it right here. Here's our sympathetic nervous system. It innervates more stuff than the parasympathetic. It's going to innervate not only the heart, but also blood vessels. That's what's shown right here. What neurotransmitter is released? Norepinephrine onto the target. So norepinephrine is released both onto the um, SA node of the heart to increase heart rate. It's released onto the, the cardiac myocytes to increase um, the opening of calcium channels to increase contractility. And it's also released onto blood vessels to alter, um, alter what? So what layer of the blood vessel walls is innervated? What tissue type? So this is the tunica media, and it's made of smooth muscle. So when norm norepinephrine binds to its receptors, it's going to trigger um, vasoconstriction, contraction of the smooth muscle, response to low blood pressure. This, just like, um, it mostly is gonna be through beta-1 receptors. So norepinephrine binds to beta-1 receptors. So norepinephrine, you can see sympathetic innervation has three mechanisms right here to respond to low blood pressure. And so that's the output. How is this signaled? How does it know when to do this? So there's a brain region circled here, medulla. There's gonna be several important regions in the medulla, cardio, Acceleratory was one that we came up last week that regulates this output to alter heart rate, cardio acceleratory. There's also going to be a brain region, different region in the medulla called the vasomotor region. And that is going to um, trigger this pathway to change the vaso, the vessels, um, and their constriction. So how do these brain regions get stimulated? Something's gotta tell them, they're integrators. Something's gotta detect higher low blood pressure and tell these brain regions to fire and tell um, the target organ to do its thing. So high and low blood pressure is detected by something called barrel receptors. Barrow refers to um, pressure. And this is short-term regulation. So this is beat to beat. So each beat, this regulation is occurring to adjust for changes in your activity and your posture. So this is the one when you stand up quickly, these receptors are to thank when you don't faint each time you don't, each time you stand up. So these baroreceptors detect blood pressure. They're located in the aortic arch. These are the aortic bodies. So these are baroreceptors. And they're also located in the um, carotid sinus. So these carotid bodies are also baroreceptors. Locations where as blood flows through, they can detect the pressure against of the blood pushing against the vessel wall. These are both really good places to measure what not local blood flow, right, of certain tissues, mean arterial pressure. This is the blood going to the systemic circuit. This is the blood going to the brain. That's a pretty darn important thing to um, maintain. So carotid bodies are located on the, the vessels that go up to um, the head. You saw these in the rat. We're gonna draw this reflex in just a moment. Before that, um, I wanna give you one more piece of information about baroreceptors. So they are designed to um, increase in firing as blood pressure increases. So let's say we have a mean arterial pressure of like 90 millimeters of mercury. It's kind of average. 
you're going to have some baseline firing of your baroreceptors. These are the sensory, um, the receptor that then sends sensory signals to the vasomotor region of the brain to say, hey, we need to um, vasoconstrict because blood pressure is low. At baseline, there's going to be some baseline amount of firing that just um, occurs. When blood pressure gets lower, firing decreases. So a decrease in firing is going to cause the vasomotor region to tell the blood vessels to constrict, vasoconstriction. A high blood pressure, let's say 120, this is going to increase firing. which then tells them the vasomotor region to not constrict. So if we're gonna put parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system activity onto these. Let's just um, say at baseline, we've got some, some balance between the two autonomic nervous systems, right? They're always ideally in balance. Um, this decreased firing of baroreceptors is going to target sympathetic. And the increased um, mean atrial pressure is going to cause this increased firing actually due to stretch. This is going to call, cause the stimulation of the parasympathetic, which is also going to reduce heart rate. So the result of high blood pressure is going to be to um, not constrict as well as decrease the slope of depolarization at the SA node to decrease heart rate and decrease blood pressure. Low blood pressure, sympathetic, those three effects I showed in the previous video, constriction of blood vessels, increase heart rate, increase contractility, so stroke volume. Better receptors are what's um, detecting this and sending the signal on. So let's go ahead and diagram what I have stated up here. And I drew some blanks for myself. Actually, I, I just did this for myself so instead of drawing it out this time. Um, so these are the boxes we're gonna fill in and the stimulus is going to be low blood pressure low blood pressure is going to be detected by baroreceptors. In this case, they're going to decrease their firing. These are the receptors, the sensor. This is going to be the afferent signal or input signal, vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves, cranial nerves, they carry the information to the medulla, the vasomotor center specifically. I've got the anatomy of the sympathetic nervous system here. It goes through the spinal cord, a ganglia before synapsing onto its target. I have integrator here as well. The target in this case is blood vessels because I've put in here response to blood vessels. We'll also have a response of, of the heart. The blood vessels are going to vasoconstrict in order to increase blood pressure. At the same time, we're also going to have an input to the vaso, I'm sorry, not vaso, cardio acceleratory. Same anatomy going to be followed, but then we're going to target the heart. Increase heart rate, increase stroke volume. So these two mechanisms are happening at the same time. The new piece here um, is the sensory part, this sensation detected by baroreceptors. Let's do a learning check. There's an individual that's hemorrhaging, so bleeding out. Um, blood pressure is low, right? 
What will be the first response to this change? What is the response and how is it detected? Let me change my color here. So the first response would be autonomic nervous system, specifically the sympathetic division, is going to cause vasoconstriction. Heart rate increase and stroke volume increase. So this is detected by baroreceptors. Yeah, I can't answer that in a funny order, but you're supposed to be answering this yourself anyways. First response is, um, okay. So detected by baroreceptors, would they increase or decrease their firing rate? 